just to the front. Okay, here you have an S3 board with a stuck power button, uh, stuck in a boot loop. So the first step is to test to ensure that the power button is the issue. And I'm just using a multimeter. Initially I had the wrong settings, but uh, you just need to check to make sure if there's uh, a closed circuit versus open circuit. Um, one, that one should be open, and then when you test on the lower top, I'm sorry, the top is open, and, without, and then the bottom is always uh, a closed circuit uh, without the button being depressed. Once the button is depressed, the top circuit will be a uh, closed circuit. As you can see by the test, they're both closed circuits uh, without the button being depressed. Whenever you press that button, uh, it'll it'll close the circuit and indicate to the board that the uh, button has been depressed. Kind of an odd angle, but you should probably get a little bit flatter, ensuring just to touch uh, the two top and lower most uh, soft ones. So they're both closed. And of course I'm just trying to position the board so, so the recording will, will catch everything. And the first step is to get some solder, uh, some flux. And I have like a gel type and I just basically use the uh, spudger and just put it on all of the solder points. Once you're satisfied with the amount of flux, you can uh, cut up some low melt desoldering wire and just place it on the solder points. The, the low melt, which what you see here, just lowers the melting point of the existing solder. It makes it, as you touch it with a soldering iron, it will mix with the existing solder and lower the melting point. You place the uh, soldering iron on there, allow the, uh, the new solder to flow and mix with the existing solder. And the, the soldering iron, I have it set at uh, 340 degrees Celsius. It could be lower, but I found that it just takes longer if it's lower. So the first point, I touch the uh, rear anchor point, and then the two solder points on the left and the right. I'm just mixing it up. And that should be enough for those. The ones that are really difficult are the ones to the left and to the right of the buttons. As there is a significant solder pad, large area, surface area, that the, uh, the new low melt solder needs to, needs to flow into. You can just leave the soldering iron, let it flow, and it will flow eventually. Of course, we're just trying to get the new low melt solder into the solder pads so that it lifts or uh, comes off much easier. So I'm just going through it again. Man, be careful not to touch that chip. That soldering iron is open. You see it on the lower part. Don't touch it. Make sure the angles uh, you have a sufficient angle so that you won't uh, remove that chip. And I'm just pushing. Slight pressure, still there it goes. Next step is to remove the slow melt solder from the solder pads. Just copper braid, uh, cut it, cut the old any old braid that you have used. Make sure you remove it. Use fresh braid. You might want to put more flux on the solder pads just to make it easier to flow into the braid. Entirely up to you. I believe there's enough saw, uh, flux on here, still on here. Goes the braid, just make sure you get most of it. Now, what you have are two uh, holes, a uh, through hole anchor points that have the old flux uh, 
I'm sorry, the old solder is still in there. The, uh, the higher temp uh, requires a higher temperature to melt. So again, I'm going to cut some low melt solder and just place it in there. This is very brittle. Once you place it, it needs to be removed so that obviously the uh, new solder joints are strong. But uh, I just put it on there, mix it up, get it into the hole. Uh, just keep the iron on there a little long just to, just to make sure it mixes with everything uh, underneath it. Of course, clean your solder iron periodically. Tin it. And the iron just stays on there, making sure that low melt solder goes into the through hole anchor point. You go to the reverse side, you'll have to do the same thing, put some flux, uh, and then some uh, low melt solder. And that should complete the process as far as removing all the old high melt solder. It might take a little while, and if that one didn't want to take, just work it in there. To event, it will eventually mix. Now, after you've done this, uh, you can use a vacuum-based desoldering iron, which I've used in the past, and it and it, it does work. It's just another tool that uh, that you need to watch. You know, plug it in and and uh, clean out after you're done. In this case, I've just found that just using the basic soldering iron does the trick. Uh, so the vacuum-based desoldering iron is just there, just in case uh, this process doesn't work. But uh, it does work. So we have low melt solder on both sides. So now you get the solder work. Make sure or the uh, desoldering work. Make sure you cut off the old uh, that you've already used, and you have fresh wire. And so we're still at 340 degrees Celsius. Just be careful not to not to leave the iron too long on the board. And you can't really tell, but uh, it's it's wicked up pretty much all of the uh, old solder from the through hole anchor points. Once you've completed this process, what you need to do is uh, tin the solder pads with uh, a high melt solder wire. Because right now the uh, the coating that's on the solder pads is low melt and it's very brittle. So obviously if you just try to directly solder the, uh, the switch on there, it'll probably just fall off as soon as you press it. So uh, just cleaning it up. Clean off your solder tip, tin it, and then put uh, some solder wire that you're going to use just to kind of coat the solder pads, and then you'll clean that off, and that should pretty much essentially remove the low, low melt solder from the solder pads. Here I'm just going to test fit to make sure that the, uh, the switch, the through hole anchor points actually go into those holes and they're not sticking up too high. But you just want to get that switch as flat as possible onto the logic board. You're going to have problems when you press the switch, it's not going to catch. Now you can put the board in some kind of clamp or vise. Uh, I prefer not to. I've never had any issues, but I, I've had I have had uh, I've had 
I have placed them in a clamp just to hold it in place. And you see these clamps throughout the video. So it just raises the board and holds it firmly. Uh, it's hard to focus. I couldn't focus it, but the the switch is, is flat. There's It's not raised. Uh, it, there's enough of the old solder removed from the through-hole anchor points allowing the new switch to, to be flush along the board, which is what you want. I'm going to take it off. Now I have to, like I said before, just uh, you'll have to tin those solder pads, sort of solder pads, uh, with uh, some high tim solder just to kind of remove the low melt solder. Now, what you want to do is you want to be careful not to introduce any solder into the through hole anchor points because you just, you just removed it. So, all you're going to do is touch um, your iron. When there's just a light amount of solder already, so you, you'll touch up the, the three big pads to the top that you currently see right now with, with solder, with the uh, soldering iron and some solder. And it's a normal solder that you're going to use, utilize to solder the switch back on. So right now you see there's a lot of solder on there, so I don't want to necessarily touch those two pads on the bottom because it might flow into the through hole anchor points. So just kind of clean off the tip, get a little bit of solder, and then just touch. The solder pads just to kind of get some solder on there. You'll be cleaning this off. Once you clean it off, it'll 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 remove any any of the old low melt solder from pads, and that should be enough. I've never had issues doing this process like this. Of course, the through hole anchor points are still clean. There's no solder in there. The switch should still fit. Lightly touching those pads just to remove, not trying not to introduce any solder into it through hole anchor points because then you'll have to start all over and remove any solder from, the, from those through hole points. Let's see if it cleaned it off, see if it gets dirty. some fresh flux on there. Flux is absolutely necessary. It allows the new solder to flow and to adhere and it prevents oxidization from forming on your on your joints. Without the flux, sometimes that solder just won't you touch the tip and it won't do anything. Flux is absolutely necessary on every solder job. There are a lot of videos that don't, where they don't use any flux at all, which is kind of odd because that's just high oxidation, brittle joints, cold joints. Uh, so that's why, even though some this wire that I'm using does have rosin flux on the core. It sometimes is not enough, so it's best always to just put your own flux on the joints, on the solder pads, before you do any soldering. Put the switch in position. It's nice and flush. Now what you do, you'll do is use a spudger to just kind of hold it down. I mean, you, I've used tweezers, lock, locking tweezers before. Um, didn't doesn't place too much pressure. Uh, you have to be careful with other types of boards, as the tweezers, um, the other boards there are chips underneath the switch, so that's the problem with the tweezers, the locking tweezers. Uh, best just to use a spudger to kind of put slight downward pressure on the switch to ensuring that it is still flush with the board. So here I'm just putting flux again all um, I'm putting I'm sorry tiny pieces of the cut soldering wire you can see that small piece just on the corners on all places that need to be 
uh, soldered in place right now. So it's just an anchor point, so two through hole anchor points and the rear anchor point. Just slight downward pressure. You don't want to crack the board just enough to keep it flush. Make sure you avoid those that chip that's on the lower part of the screen. Just touch it up and it should flow and it should be fine. Now with the remaining solder, once you've got solder on the tip, now you're just touching the two pads left and right. Uh, just And those are the two points that matter. They actually make the connection or allow your phone to know that the switch has been depressed. So now the front, the front, or in this case the lower, through hole anchor points uh, left and right. So you just touch that wire, it will flow underneath the switch into the solder pad. It's already been tinned uh, with, with the same uh, solder wire, so it's the same type, it'll flow into it. Uh, that's just basically getting it locked down flush. Of course, you'll, you'll continue to touch up these uh, these two anchor points, ensuring that the wire does go flow into the uh, solder pad. So right now it's in place, it's flush. You can continue just working it, which is what I'm doing here. I'm just putting more heat, and allowing the uh, the solder wire to flow into the solder pad. In which it does. I mean, I've never had issues with this thing popping up and coming loose. So now you have those uh, left and right joints. You wanna you, those two points cannot short on the uh, on the casing of the switch. There's a little pad that's on the switch. It's hard to see. If you look at it, you'll be able to tell. Uh, so it goes from the solder pad to that switch. You cannot have too much solder where it connects to the casing or else it's just going to be constantly depressing or thinking that the switch is pressed. So once you've soldered it, you make sure that the solder only goes to the pad on the switch and not the metal casing of the switch. Which sometimes if you put too much, it will. I'll try to add some pictures at the end showing uh, a proper soldering job where there is no short. And you will need magnification to to, to allow you to, to uh, notice any shorts. That's just me looking at the switch, making sure that all points are uh, the dual two points are fine, there's no shorting. I didn't position it right, I wanted to show, but uh, it was it's kind of hard, I guess it was hard from the angle. Clean it off once you're satisfied, or you can just continue touching it up. So here's a test, ensuring that the uh, the circuit, the circuits are, or in this case, this is a closed circuit, as, as it should be. The top should only should only activate when the button is depressed from so this should be an open circuit here which it is now of course the next step is press the button but it's kind of hard to do with just two hands so you'll have somebody depress the button or you could push it towards the, something solid to test the button but uh, most switches are, are fine but uh, you just want to make sure that the top one is, is still open And just clean it off, and that should do it. Just put it back together, easy reassembly. There's nothing complicated about the disassembly or reassembly process uh, to remove the logic board on S3, S2, S4. And the same process applies across the board uh, for S2, S3, S4 power buttons, volume buttons.